Holy Mass is offered for Kiki and Carlos Tejeda. All peoples clap your hands, cry to God with shouts of joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Kings. One day, Elisha came to Shunamen, where there was a woman of influence who urged him to dine with her. Afterward, whenever he passed by, he used to stop there to dine. So she said to her husband, I know that Elisha is a holy man of God. Since he visits us often, let's arrange a little room on the roof and furnish it for him with a bed, table, chair, and lamp, so that when he comes to us, he can stay there. Sometime later, Elisha arrived and stayed in the room overnight. Later, Elisha asked, can something be done for her? His servant, Gehazi, answered yes. She has no son, and her husband is getting on in years. Elisha said, call her. When a woman had been called and stood at the door, Elisha promised, this time next year, you will be fondling a baby son. The word of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The promises of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, my kindness is established forever. In heaven you have confirmed your faithfulness. Blessed are the people who know the joyful shout. In the light of your countenance, O Lord, they walk. At your name they rejoice all the day, and through your justice they are exalted. You are the splendor of their strength, and by your favor our horn is exalted. For to the Lord belongs our shield, and to the Holy One of Israel our King.
Lectura de la Carta del Apóstol San Pablo a los Romanos. Hermanos, todos los que hemos sido incorporados a Cristo Jesús por medio del bautismo, hemos sido incorporados a su muerte. En efecto, por el bautismo fuimos sepultados con él en su muerte, para que, así como Cristo resucitó de entre los muertos por la gloria del Padre, Así también nosotros llevemos una vida nueva. Por lo tanto, si hemos muerto con Cristo, estamos seguros de que también viviremos con Él, pues sabemos que Cristo, una vez resucitado de entre los muertos, ya nunca morirá. La muerte ya no tiene dominio sobre Él, porque al morir murió al pecado de una vez para siempre, y al resucitar, vive ahora para Dios. Lo mismo ustedes considerense muertos al pecado y vivos para Dios en Cristo Jesús, Señor nuestro. Palabra de Dios. Aleluya, aleluya. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his, to his apostles, Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy, worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me. And whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. Whoever receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever receives a righteous man because he is a righteous man will receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives only a cup of cold water to one of these little ones to drink because the little one is a disciple. And then I say to you, he will surely not lose his reward. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. What a strange statement. And coming from the lips of anyone else would be the most ridiculous claim anyone's ever made. But God actually has the right to make this claim for two reasons. Uh, first, he's God. That means he's infinitely lovable. He's more beautiful, more lovable, more good than anything else that could possibly be imagined. And so he has a strict right to our love. Secondly, in what he has done for us as our Savior and Redeemer. If we dwell upon his teachings, his healings, his passion, his resurrection, the gift of the Holy Spirit to us. We can't fail but to be filled with love for him. And so on these two counts, these words that Jesus says, that you have to love him more than father or mother, make the greatest sense in the world. There's a context to it, though. 
Uh, this is from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 10. And it begins a few lines uh, earlier when Jesus says, Do not think that I have come to bring peace, but the sword to set father against son, son against father, mother against daughter, daughter against mother, mother mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. Now, as I understand it, that last one is kind of the normal course of affairs, so you can't blame it on Jesus. What's Jesus' point in this? Uh, He isn't saying that he wants there to be division and destruction in our families and lives. He's telling you what occurs when you truly follow him. We've become accustomed to a kind of comfortable Christianity. One world and one foot in the gospel, one foot in the world and the cares and concerns of the world. The gospel is a radical thing. And if we really embrace the gospel, if we truly follow Jesus with faithfulness, there are consequences to it. On the one side, certain things that we believe as Christians will cause others to call us, well, socialists, snowflakes, bleeding hearts, right? We'll be made out to be foolish Uh, When we really embrace Christianity uh, at its heart, we become strange and weird to those around us. On the other side, especially on certain moral positions that we take, we'll be called bigots. Hypocrites, they'll love to call us. And so you will risk, by embracing the discipleship of Jesus, You will risk being rejected by parents, by spouses, by siblings, by relatives, by friends. You will stand to lose all of these things for the sake of following Jesus. That's the cost. But Jesus doesn't end with that. He continues on. And whoever does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Whenever I read these words, I'm always reminded of the great little book written by a Lutheran pastor, Dietrich Bonhoeffer. It's called The Cost of Discipleship. If you've never read it, you ought. He's got a great line in that book. He says, when Jesus calls a man to come and follow him, he bids him come and die. St. Paul in his uh, letter to the Romans, he says this, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. We ought to be those who are dead to the world, the concerns and cares of the world, that have Jesus and his life at the very heart of all of our focus and attention. And if we really do it, it is going to make us appear strange to the rest of the world. We'll become the fanatics, as it were. Jesus says in the gospel, who receives a prophet because he is a prophet, receives a prophet's reward. And whoever receives a righteous man because he is a righteous man, receives a righteous man's reward. But then what is the reward that one obtains by receiving Jesus. A divine reward, an everlasting reward, an eternal inheritance. He says, whoever gives only a cup of cold water to one of these little ones to drink because the little one is my disciple, amen, I say to you, he will surely not lose 
his reward. Little ones here doesn't mean children. It means the anawim, the poor, the outcast, the dispossessed. Those whose only inheritance is God and God alone. As long as we fill our hearts with the desires for anything else that isn't God, we risk losing the reward of the little ones that belong to him. We have to live simple, radical, Christian lives. And yes, that means facing the rejection of the world, sometimes family and friends. But gaining everything else, if we seek to find ourselves in this world and forget that we're in the world but not of the world, we don't belong to it. We belong to him who paid the price upon the cross. Whenever we forget that, we risk losing something greater than the things that the world offers us. My brothers and sisters, do not be afraid. Do not be ashamed of the gospel. Live it in all of its radical faithfulness and earn an eternal reward. El que quiere a su padre o a su madre más que a mí, no merece ser mío. El que quiere a su hijo o a su hija más que a mí, no merece ser mío. Y el que no toma su cruz y me sigue, no merece ser mío. Jesús nos dice en el Evangelio según San Mateo, capítulo 10, que no ha uh, venido a traer paz al mundo. Y no ha venido a traer paz, sino guerra. No quiere decir que desee fracción o división, sino que si aceptamos el cristianismo, y nos atrevemos a vivir la radicalidad del Evangelio, sin duda descubriremos dificultades y tribulaciones. Por un lado, el Evangelio en su plenitud nos hará ganar el nombre de socialistas, tontos, corazones sagrantes. Por otro lado, el Evangelio nos hará ganar el nombre de fanáticos, mojigatos y raros. El costo de discipulado es un libro uh, uh, por Dietrich Bonhoeffer y él nos dice esto. Cuando Jesús llama a un hombre para que venga y lo siga, le ordena que venga y muera. De acuerdo con San Pablo a los romanos, todos los que hemos sido incorporados a Cristo Jesús por medio del bautismo, hemos sido incorporados a su muerte. En efecto, por el bautismo fuimos sepultados con él en su muerte para que así como Cristo resucitó de entre los muertos por la gloria del Padre, así también nosotros llevemos una vida nueva. Lo mismo ustedes considerense muertos al pecado y vivos para Dios en Cristo Jesús, Señor nuestro. Jesús tiene derecho a nuestro amor por al menos dos motivos. Él es Dios y por lo tanto es infinitamente amable. Y Él es nuestro Salvador y Redentor. Él tiene un derecho estricto a nuestro amor. Si recibimos una recompensa de los profetas por recibir a un profeta, 
y una recompensa de personas justas por recibir a una persona justa. ¿Qué recibiremos si recibimos a Cristo como nuestro Señor y Salvador? Una recompensa divina, vida eterna y adopción por gracia como hijos e hijas, una herencia eterna. Mis hermanos y hermanas, no tengan miedo de vivir el Evangelio en toda su plenitud. Convirtámonos en personas dispuestas a todo cuidado mundano. Seamos muertos al mundo y al pecado para que podamos vivir para Dios por medio de Cristo. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, 
Grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy. For you are the one God, living and true, existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you, who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night, and gazing upon the glory of your face, glorify you without ceasing. With them we too confess your name in exultation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners, freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart, joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, May this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> Thus
the mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church, and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice, that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, his assistant bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom. There, with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit through your death give life to the world, free me by this, your most holy body and blood, from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me always faithful to your commandments and never let me be parted from you. Be 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. O Father, I pray for them that they may be one in us, that the world may believe that you have sent me, says the Lord.
Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that, bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Before I give the final blessing, a reminder, we need at least 12 volunteers to help wipe down the pews before the next Mass. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that the Christian people may understand the truths they profess and love the heavenly liturgy in which they participate through Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.